going on guys? Will here, welcome to the video. So today we're gonna be doing just a regular, just a raw shoulder and back workout and some biceps. I don't really do too much arms lately, but I'm gonna throw in some biceps at the end. Uh, so this is actually my favorite workout of the week, making my pre-workout shake. So I've, I've actually been experimenting a lot with different pre-workouts and this seems to do it for me, this potion I've kind of made up for myself. So I kind of tried like Total War and like a bunch of those other like Nitroflex intense pre-workouts, but so doesn't seem to do it, but this this one does the trick. Um, so doing a lot of overhead press today, um, weighted pull-ups, and then some other kind of rowing work. Go to the sugar. Just a little bit, not a lot. And then you gotta get at least five grams. I usually go five grams of creatine a day. Two and a half, around that. And then last but not least, what am I forgetting? Oh, salt, salt. And then after the workout today, going to Chipotle to get a nice post-workout meal. So it's actually a lot later. I wouldn't typically work out. So it's 6.04, you see in the clock right there. Usually work out around 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. But a lot of stuff to do today, so working out late and then have a crazy post-workout meal. I have actually have not eaten the entire day for this post-workout meal, which you guys will see afterwards. So that is the pre-workout shake. Zero calories, fairly healthy. It doesn't look too bad. When I can't eat for the entire day, when I have some sort of food challenge, my mom bakes. So these are some chocolate chip banana protein muffins. And obviously Ollie cannot eat these because they're chocolate and dogs will eat from chocolate. Dog, not dogs will eat from chocolate. Dogs will die from chocolate, but we hooked him up. So we'll give him the honey dip timbit. Oh, Jesus, that was actually like, wow. That was like a nice attack there. I didn't even see that coming. So this is actually my favorite day of the four day splits, day number one. So I've had two full days rest. And whenever I have two full days rest, the workout after that, I'm like so excited to work out. So I cannot wait. So let's go to the gym. At the gym, obviously, as you guys can tell, look how look how busy it is right now. Uh, I feel like, I, I'm like I'm like the only one who wants to lift right now. But anyway, uh, shoulders and back, like I said, the two main compound movements of the day are gonna be the overhead press and then the weighted pull-ups, but we're gonna be starting with the overhead press because it's my favorite exercise of all time. So what I've been adding into my routine lately is top sets. So today we're gonna be going up to a top set of five, which just means one heavy set of five. Um, in terms of warm-ups up to the top set, I kind of just go by how I feel that day. It could be three warm-up sets, it could be five warm-up sets. We'll just see how it goes. So I'm hoping to get 195 pounds for five reps today, and then I'm gonna do four sets of 10 back off sets. So whatever I hit for my top set, I drop the weight by 20%, and that's what I do for my back off sets. So let's get into it. So with overhead press, when you come to unrack the bar, you wanna have your elbows in front of you here. I see a lot of people kind of go like, like this like your shoulders are flared out and your elbows are flared and that's what I like to call snap city. So don't do that. Again, just shoulders, elbows in front of the bar. Gives you a stronger platform to push from. Start in the upper chest, slow down. Okay, so warm up complete. I did five reps, three reps, one rep. So you have 195 pounds on the bar about to get this for five. I'm gonna get this for five, it's all in your mind. So just choosing my song. Don't know where I'm gonna set of five with 195 pounds. So I'm gonna probably need around three minutes for, so, so I can stop seeing some black spots right now because I'm seeing some black spots. Uh, so now I put on 160 pounds, which I'm gonna do four sets of 10 with. Yeah, so three minute break and we get back into it. Ooh, 
Okay, that was four sets of 10. It's crazy how much lighter that feels after you do the top set. So that's the main shoulder exercise. So now we're gonna go into some weighted pull-ups. Okay, so for weighted pull-ups, we're doing four sets of 10. So on this back day, I focus more on a, a vertical pull. So the weighted pull-up's my main one for the back, but then on the next back day, I focus on a heavy a row. So that's just what I do. And then after the uh, pull-ups, then I'll kind of do some sort of like a, a lighter row. And then on the other day, I'll do, do some sort of lighter pull. Just a little mix. So what I like to do is I like to go from a shoulder movement to a back movement, back to a shoulder movement, back to a back movement, back to back. So it gives one muscle group time to rest while you hit the other one. Okay, so the next exercise we're doing is behind the neck shoulder press. So this one's kind of iffy for some people. Some people can't do it if you have really bad shoulder mobility, but um, I don't stress putting a lot of weight on the bar. I'm more so focused on reps and quality and a quality rep because if you don't do this one properly, it can get pretty bad. So three sets, 10 to 12 reps. So unlike the traditional overhead press where I said to have your elbows in front of the bar, this one I intentionally go a little bit wider grip and I do have my elbows slightly flared. I feel like I just feel a little bit better, especially when I do it behind the neck, but uh, that's just me. Compound movements, guys, kill me. Wow, nothing makes you out of breath like compound movements, like isolation work, like machines and cable stuff, man. Don't need it. So this is gonna be the rowing portion of the workout. So not many gyms have this, but if you do, it's a great one to have. So this is kind of like the seal row. So as you can see, the barbells here, and then I added the handle attachments. So what it allows me to do is if I just held the bar, I'd kind of row and then this would stop me from going all the way up because we want our elbow to get as far past our body as we possibly can for a maximally contracted uh, back. So what this does is when I bring it out, I'm now allowed to come all the way up, even past the pad, all the way up, squeeze, and back down. So this is a really good one. I was just introduced to this one like two weeks ago. Absolutely love it. It gets you really, really sore. And it's a nice thing, especially with back rows, to give yourself your lower back a break from like the, all the heavy rows and squats. So by using a chest supported row every now and then, it gives the lower back a little bit of a rest so you can push it a little bit harder on the rows where you don't have chest support. So we're gonna load this up, four sets, 10 to 12 reps. Okay, so another good thing about a chest supported row is that it keeps your progression honest. So since you're locked in with chest on the pad, you can't really cheat the way up. Like if you did like a barbell row or like a deadlift row, you might add weight, but like even if you add weight, that means you might add some more like motion to your lift. So technically, even if you go up in weight, you might not activate the back as much. So by doing something like this, it keeps your progression way more honest. Most people were silent. Woo. Okay, two more sets. And then we go to our last shoulder movement, and then we have one more back movement, and then we finish off with some biceps, and that's the workout. Quick. Efficient, that's all you need. Trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty. And to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form. Back is feeling it, guys. Wow. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean you shouldn't train it, just like the heart. Okay, so now we're gonna be doing a lateral raise movement on this incline bench here. So with lateral raises, you can really go so like so much in weight before it just gets like impossible. Like you'll rarely see someone 
do lateral raises with like over 50 pounds like that's even crazy itself so you have to be really creative with some sort of movements that you do so i was just introduced to this one which i really really like and there's some special cues that you should know when I, i'll show you them right now so again you don't need that much weight when you do lateral raises it's all about how you activate the shoulder so you're gonna come lean on one side you want to be as like parallel to the floor as you possibly can and we're going to start the dumbbell here so when i start the dumbbell here my shoulder is completely stretched and a lot of people all, all of a sudden will just go up like that but what you want to notice is like so there's two movements here so you go you initiate the shoulder and then you raise and come back down instead of just going like this so initiate raise so three sets 12 to 15. When I do shoulders, I do like most of my work is overhead pressing and lateral raises. I don't do really any sort of rear delt work because when you like do like any heavy row pull ups, I'll hit your uh, rear delts like crazy. So I don't waste my time with a bunch of isolation stuff like that. Okay, so that's the shoulders. They're freaking pumping out. I think they're on like their third trimester right now. So now we're doing some uh, lat work for the back and some dumbbell curls, and that's it. So the last back thing we're doing is the uh, machine high row. So I really like this one because it gives, it gives you like a, a long range of motion, a really good stretch on the lat, and I really like the contraction coming down. So again, not many gyms have this one, so if you do have it, it's a really good one to use. Okay, so for this one, three sets, 12 to 15 reps. So when I do like a lot of movements, like three sets, 12 to 15, when there's a rep range, how I progress on that is, so for example, in this movement, I have 70 pounds on the bar, on like the machine. And last week I got 15, 15, 13. So this week I'm hoping to get 15, 15, 15. So I'm very patient with my progress. And then once I hit all sets of 15, I'll then add five pounds. So I'll do 75 pounds per side, start with 12 reps and then work my way up to uh, three sets of 15, then go to 80 pounds, go like that. So just keep on uh, building up, rinsing and repeating. So I hit all three sets of 15, so added two reps this week. I'm freaking happy right now. So next week we'll go to 75 pounds and restart the process. So last thing we're gonna do is just bicep work. So I'm guilty of it. I don't really do that much arm training. It's kind of weird, I know. A lot of people love training arms. I actually hate training arms, but I'm trying to add some more arms into my routine. So I'm just gonna do the standard dumbbell curl um, with biceps. So I just like to be very basic. I'll do like a dumbbell curl or a barbell curl, hammer curl, incline curl. curl. I don't get too fancy with it. So we're gonna do uh, demo curls, three sets, 10 to Okay, so that's gonna do the workout. Quick hour and 10 minute session. Now we're gonna go eat. All right, so now we're gonna be heading to Chipotle. So basically what happened was, I go to Chipotle pretty often and they're like, Will, you're such a good customer. We wanna name a burrito after you and just like put it in all of the like, all of the restaurants worldwide. How about you come tonight and do a taste test of your burrito? I'm just kidding guys. So what they actually said is, Will, you're an absolute weirdo. You come in and you like get the weirdest shit. How about you come in tonight and get the biggest burrito that you've ever seen? I will make you one personally. And I was just like, I'll see you there. So I have no idea what to expect. Like he didn't even give me any sort of heads up as to, as to like how big this thing is gonna be. So I'm bringing my food scale with me. Will the type of guy to bring his food scale to a restaurant. I'm also curious, are you guys team burrito or team taco? I know with tacos you get like a bunch of different like variety, but like I'm team burrito. I like my shit compact. I like it like tidy, you know what I'm saying? So let's see what we're up against, I'm curious. So this is Daniel. He is the Chipotle uh, manager. He's gonna be making me some sort of monstrous burrito, right? 
So what's gonna be going in this thing? It's up to you, dude. What, what would you like? It's what would you, you like in the burrito? Like I'm what kind of meat? I'm a barbacoa fan. Barbacoa fan? Yeah. How about chicken? All, I mean, just My whole whatever. chicken is the everyone, best. Every, I, it's a party, everyone's invited. Everyone's invited. Perfect. Put everything you want in it. I'm getting butterflies right now. Five. How many tortillas? Five? Huh. Five tortillas. Five tortillas. All right. Can I Okay, yeah. Perfect. I shouldn't have said that. You see the amount of peace on that thing? I'm already like feeling here. I thought I got like, I stocked them on toilet paper. Alright, that's why he's the man. Alright. Not good. I lift, I think. But this thing has to be like. This thing has to be like 8 pounds? I think it's 10 pounds. 10 pounds? I think it's like the we'll find out. I brought this. Perfect. Okay, here we go. 5 pounds, 2 ounces. Okay, 5 pounds, 2 ounce burrito. I would say it's five pounds two ounces. How many? Five pounds two ounces. Holy shit! I'm, I'm gonna okay right now. I'll get this down in 15 minutes. 15 what? minutes. I'll be like, cheese. If I get this down in 15 minutes, what's the bet? We can back on. All right, chips and cases is gonna be on me. Chips and cases on you? Yeah. All right. Let's go. Just for to reassure, just so this is not like some sort of. Oh what? Why is this one? What's that? Two point two kilos. Two point three kilos. Let's go for the ounces. Child's play, man. Child's play. Five pounds. All right. Let's do this. Jesus. Okay, so Daniel is going to be the timer. Three, two, one. Go. Wow. Make a good burrito, man. Projectile vomit everywhere right now. That's a satisfying burrito, though. Okay, stop it. Yo, bro. Look at this guy. <laughs> Three minutes. You finish it like in 12 minutes. Got the chips and queso. Come on. What's the, come on, let's go. I'm still hungry, man. I'm not. I'm just kidding. I'm trying to be cocky there. Holy shit. Never having Chipotle. Probably until next week. But I mean, for the next seven days, I'm totally put off from Chipotle. For sure. That was. I literally just ate a human being. There you go, man. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. You make a, you make a great burrito. Perfect. I mean, like, if you were a drug dealer, you'd roll a good joint. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. So, I'll right. be back for another one. We're doing, another, we're doing a Chipotle round two, right? What's, yeah. what's, the, what's the thing? I'll make it like twice the bigger. Twice? Twice. And how long do I have? 
15 minutes. Another 15, 15 minutes. minutes? No yeah. way. How is this? If I do it, how about if I do it, I get free Chipotle, I get rubber. That I gotta do it. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down, slash, lay down on this bench for probably a good like 20 minutes, and then drive home. Lay down again. But before I lay down again, probably sit on the toilet and just wait for the apocalypse to happen. All right, well, I feel like, like holy shit. I'm actually, that burrito just turned me into the Hulk, I guess, but. Um, feeling quite sick, as you guys could probably imagine. That was probably like four cans worth of beans, so stomach's churning as we speak. Uh, I just channeled my inner Matt Stoney there. Uh, but it was always, it's always nice to leave with a little loot bag, so I have some nachos and queso for my family, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna wrap up the video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.